crowding down for Sohail Ahmad and against Trowbridge's Dirty Down Car. It's the first fight Kevin's anything to go by. It's not me walking the park. You can't take anything for granted. No, definitely. I mean, Ahmed's coming looks in, in great shape. And the only thing I would notice straight away is they were standing before they announced. It's not as so noticeable now that in the boxing stance is Ahmed's got a much, it's much taller. He's got the range on him, but Dan Carr is is a very tough man to beat. He's had lost 40 fights, taken taken part in his 45th out in today. Uh, lost 40 of them, but only ever been stopped once. So again, another tough, durable person, and, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how Ahmed comes through this. Some nicknames in boxing are ill-deserved. I can say I've been watched Dan Carr several times over the years. His nickname of Dirty is thoroughly deserved. He's already getting ticking off for pulling on. Uh, he can be quite um, industrial with his head. It'd be just interesting to see how Sahel deals with this. Yeah, and Ahmed is, is, has got a very unorthodox style as well. He's very rangy, likes to throw shots from, from different angles. Uh, and he's very raw. He didn't have much of an amateur pedigree. So I think it's all about learning fights from at the moment and Dan Carr, I think, will ask the questions of him. Born in Afghanistan, I believe, Ahmed, so... Quite intriguing, Ahmed, Kevin. He's come from a Taekwondo background. So what kind of challenges do these guys who operate in different disciplines when they try and be a boxer? Is it more to do with your stance or how you point your feet? Yeah, I can only talk from experience for myself. I tend to find anyone coming from a kickboxing background, Taekwondo, the hardest part is to make the transition is with the stance is to get their feet right. Obviously the stance for boxing to taekwondo to kickboxing is completely different and all boxers box on the legs or they should box on the legs. Everything's about balance and generating power from the feet and the legs and nice flurry of punches there. But yeah, so it's, it's interesting to get him to, to transition into the stance, but he seems to have done that. He seems to look like a boxer. Got caught with a left hand there as he stepped out, old Ahmed. Obviously, perhaps the most famous boxer who's um, come from a kickboxing origin is none other than uh, Vitavi Klitschko, and um, perhaps, perhaps in the UK as well. Many people might not know, but Scott Quigg, who's obviously due to challenge for um, the BBA version of Super Amperweight World Title recently, actually began as an MMA background. So, just testing me that fighters can make the transition and do very well. Yeah, it seems to be more and more happening just recently. You know, people turning over from different pedigrees as, as you know, the licenses are, you know, people are getting licenses say easier now than perhaps what they were 10 years ago so you are seeing more and more come over some make the transition nicely and some don't and I think that just comes down to whether they've got the skills you know their, their striking stance and that their strikers whether they're a, or whether they're a kicker if they're coming from a background but as you say Quig and uh, Klitschko and some have made the, uh, the transition quite nicely so some haven't uh, Pele Reid is probably one of the most immediately springs to mind there. Yeah, there's so, uh, you know, it's, it's horses for courses, some do and some don't, but a very even round there. I think Ahmed edged that round, so won that round, the, you know, trying to establish his jab a little bit more. Yeah, Dan, as you said, got a, a ticking off. His first ticking off, yeah, inside the first minute. I think if, uh, for Ahmed, he just needs to try and keep the fight at range. You know, Kai has a He's got a good trainer in Kevin Marie and I know the Goodwin team are uh, expecting good things for Ahmed so it'll be interesting to see how he progresses. Again we've got to remember he's only in his second pro fight, he won his first one on points, Dan Carr doesn't get stopped so I see this one going the same way so knowing that he's unlikely to stop Carr I would say that Ahmed just got to establish his boxing, get on his jab and just win the rounds convincingly by using his boxing ability, which he looks like he's got, but he does, he does look in incredible shape anyway, that's for sure. You may have saw that Ahmed tonight was accompanied to the ring by Yassine Almachi, his countryman, and um, Yassine obviously won prize fights, unfortunately he suffered a, a, a quite serious knee injury. He's been out of the ring for a while. Nice shots there, hooks there. Sorry to cut you off again, Ben. Yeah, nice hooks there. Good shots, yeah. Car covered up well. Yeah, as you, you said, he looks like Elmachi as well to look at, doesn't he? The, you know, he's a show star. I think Elmachi's uh, the showman, if I, if I remember rightly. So they are uh, obviously very close friends. Elmachi brought him down to the ring. So, and they, they look the same as well. We've got very similar. I think Elmachi's a bit more awkward and unorthodox. Ahmed looks to be a little bit more textbook, but not a lot more. I'd like to see Ahmed just to try and establish his jab again, as we talked about before, just to try and use his range that he's got, try and keep Dan at bay. We know Dan likes to come in nice and close and 
has a reputation for, for being dirty, so it'll be interesting. I think the, the refs here just tell them to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, no, no surprise really there, but it's important now that Ahmed just, just tries to keep his composure, doesn't get dragged into a fight, tries to get that jab established like you just said there, Kevin. Looks for the count in the right hand. I'd like to see him on the move a little bit more. I'd like to see him move his feet, try and move his upper body. Got caught of a right hand there. Ahmed's just got a habit of when he throws, he just drops his left hand. I think Dan see that and, and count with that shot there. Again, I can't understand why Ahmed hasn't started to establish his jab a little bit more and build off of that. I think Carr's there to be hit with the, the one twos just straight down the middle, but Ahmed seems to be waiting too long looking for that right hand rather than getting that left hand to just break up Carr's rhythm a little bit. Fairly untidy round so far, it's um, probably up for grabs in this final minute. Again, okay, from there, I'd like to see Ahmed from there, just from there, that distance there, just getting the jab out. Keeping Carr busy, Carr's going to look to come under the jab and is looking to come under to try and get inside to close the distance. Yeah, so Hale's just probably just waiting a fraction, you know, a few seconds too long just to get his punches off. At that point, down to closer range. And then it's tied up being very messy, the ref's trying to, trying to sort out a very scrappy affair so far, Ben. Again, from there, I'd like to see Ahmed from there, just trying to establish from, from that range. Dan's wading in, throwing shots. How are you scoring this round, Ben? I'm going to sit on the fence, Kevin, now. Um, I think very few clean shots have been landed, and um, what's the hail thrown he's largely missed with. Um, you can maybe say he edged it on work rate, but in truth, I'll probably score it even. It's a tough round. It's been a very scrappy round. The first round was a little bit better, a little bit more cleaner shot from Ahmed, but this round has been very, very tight and spent a lot of time wrestling with each other. Yeah, the cancel each other out now in close. I'd like to see Ahmed maybe come around the side, try and look for some angles, maybe take half a step back. Ahmed's going to have the, the joy at distance, trying to keep down on the end of the, the long shots, and you know, he's a, he's a tall, rangy fighter, so we look a nice little one after the bell there from Dan. I mean, for any young fighter, you know, Dan Carr is a, a very difficult journeyman to get against. You know, he does his job well as a journeyman role very, very well, doesn't give fighters an easy night. So. Ahmed's probably feeling quite frustrated now. So as a trainer, what would you be telling him in the corner now, Kevin, in between rounds? Well, for me, as I said before, for Ahmed, you know, Dan is a journeyman. He knows how to survive. He knows how to, to get in and, and mess. And, and, where, and that's where journeymen live, in the shell, covered up and close and spoiling. You know, journeymen, that's one thing they're very underrated for. They know how to get through a fight, protect a fight, because this is their living at the end of the day. And, you know, if they get stopped, then their the license is is suspended for 28 days, so they know how to defend and mess and get inside. We just like to see Ahmed just take half a step back, create a little bit of distance, throw from a little bit further away just to get the, the, the jab going, just to ask Dan a few questions. So Dan's got some shots to try and slip past to get on the inside rather than just boring forward and getting inside of any shot. Just like there, nice straight right hand there. Much That's better from around Ahmed. there from Ahmed, yeah. Much better. Found the range there. Down far in back. Again, from there, I'd like to see him step set. Nice caught him with a jab on the way in. So I'd like to see him throwing shots so he's catching Carl on the way in. Dan Carl looking over there towards corner for some assistance. No doubt he's seen it all before there. Again, okay, very, very messy. messy. Yeah, very, very messy. I'm pleased this is a four rounder rather than a six rounder. <laughs> it's very difficult, as you said, Carr's a, a very difficult fighter to look good against. And, and like I said, this is where Carr lives on the inside, being scrappy. But Ahmed, if he's going to go on and do anything, he's going to come across guys like this, who's going to try and mess him up and, and cause problems. Nice little left hook got in there from Carr. Could the referee be breaking up a bit sooner, do you think? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> they spent so much time in close, if they kept breaking them up, we, we, I don't think we'd ever get, the, get any fight. So I think it's a case of just then. I mean, Ahmed's got to, in my opinion, from this, go forward and try and learn how to deal with someone on the inside. Maybe learn to try and break away to the side, create angles, or take half a step back and, and use his range. I really wouldn't like to see him this close to Carr. 
car got through there, just a little sneak cut around the side of her head. And it's Carl that's marching across the ring to meet Ahmed there. It seems that Carl's the one that wants it a bit more in this, in this round in particular. Both tired and looks a little bit tired now towards this round. Nice little flurry there. I say I'd like to see Ahmed just step up from there, throw shots from this sort of distance, get his jab going. Because once Dan's in there, Dan's not afraid to let go of his shots once he gets inside. Yeah, I think Carl might be edging this round, so it'll be interesting. They gave the first round to Ahmed, uh, second round they caught split him. I think Carl might be shading this. Through work rate, as you said before, Carl's the one that's marching across the ring and wanting to, to engage. But Carl seems to take a little bit of a breather. He seems to be complaining a little bit just then. He's talking to Ahmed. Nice right hand there, but it was on the gloves. How are you scoring this so far? I think, like you, I think you had to give Ahmed the, the, just about the, the first round just for you know the work rate a little bit. But I think Carr in this round has, has worked a little bit harder. Yeah, it's been a very, sheer, very sheer strapping round. Uh, we're not going to give Dan Carr this round. There's no, been no real shots of any, any worth to mention as of yet. Ahmed's looking for that right hand, and Carl likes to put his head down and just wade forward, swinging hooks, and, and hopes he gets, hopes he gets the, uh, the win. But, I mean, Carl's fought some good boys through his career. So, I mean, he's fought Billy Morgan twice. He's fought uh, Mitchell Smith, who's a, a, a good prospect. Scott Jenkins and Martin Warren as well. So he's been in with some good boys. But as we said, it, it doesn't get stopped very often. Fourth and final round coming up. I think it's fair to say we've probably seen more of Dirty Dan than we have of the showman so far. Yeah, very much so. Dan's, Dan's certainly, as you say, living up to his name. But yeah, he's be assistant. He's up off the stool. He looks like yeah, he's ready and ready yeah, to go. It's all about psychology as well. And he was the one that in that round, in that third round, that was marching across and and wanting to engage. He seems up for this. Be interesting to see how the referee scored it as the first fight of the it evening we got wrong. So it's, uh, I don't think we'll score anymore, Ben, because we got the first one completely wrong. Absolutely. Ahmed's just got to get on that, that jab. Got to. And I think Carl's going to go for it. Carl's come out like a man, like he's fighting. To, to get the win or even a, a share of the points. Yeah, well, just two wins in Dan's previous um, four, seat, four outings. But you wouldn't know it. You know, these journeymen take pride. They take pride in seeing out the distance, but they also want to get that win as well. That's the thing about a journeyman. If you don't take care of journeymen, if you don't establish things, some of them will have a go. You know, as much as journeymen know their trade and, and know their job and a lot of them know on the road it's very difficult to get the win but if they sense that they're going to get that victory there are you know they can go for it and and they're much better fighters than people give them credit for journeymen you know as we said before a lot of them do this for a living so they don't fight like perhaps they would like to knowing for where I don't want to get stopped they want to take risks that perhaps a prospect will take that's oh, much nice better shot, from nice shot, man. much better so, using yeah. his feet now <laughs> trying to keep the distance using his feet and boxing just yeah. can't understand the seat much better. Yeah. Nice. Got caught there, got caught two shots there from Carl. And getting caught on the inside. Just enough from sale. Just found a bit of room in the upper court, but then dropped his hands again and paid the price for it. The show star and very showman there as he drops his hands. He yeah. is very raw, we, we can't forget how many say he has that much of an amateur pedigree, so it is learning fights for him. But that's what I'd like to have seen him do from round one, using his feet creating angles, giving himself a bit of distance so that Carl's charging in and falling short and then catching him from there. So that's much better. Two or three shots and then changing angle, much better for It's all about keeping the distance from to Hale. There's a minute left in the fourth. It seems final to have found a key to how to keep Carl at bay. Just needs to get through with some scoring shots to push this round and possibly the fight as well. See, that's much, they say much better, the movement, and maybe that's what Kevin Marie's told him in the corner maybe use his feet he looks like he can move he, he looks like from there his certain bits were quite good and I can understand why there is some talk about Ahmed going on to be uh, a good prospect and I know there's there's some certain areas talking saying you know he's one to watch out for I can't say from this showing I think much of that but nice shot there yeah, all trainers have to be versatile as you know Kevin but 
difference between Sahail and um, Kevin Anderson, who Kevin Marie also uh, trained oh, yeah. Sorry, Ben. Chalk and cheese. Very much so, yeah, completely different styles. And, and that's the thing as a trainer, and Kevin's a very experienced trainer, so he will know. You, you work to a fighter's strengths, and, and you know, Kenny Anderson's a very tough man. You know, likes to likes to punch, and Ahmed, I would imagine, would try to hands down, very orthodox, trying to use his natural movement, slip shots. Just hasn't moved enough for me tonight. Got involved in the brawl, trying to wrestle with him a little bit too much. Yeah, it's been a close fight to score. This, it's been intriguing to see where the referee goes. Yeah, it's very difficult to score. Ahmed's perhaps had the cleaner shots right at the beginning of the round, but Dan's come on towards the middle and the end of the round. There, be interesting to see how he scores it. How he scored it. Very interesting. So at the beginning of the fourth round there, Ahmed showed what he obviously can do. He can move, he can put shots together. And Carr, as he always does, shows what he can do. And yeah. that's come forward, be aggressive. Yeah, another stubborn performance from Dan Carr. He's um, a very difficult fighter to um, dissuade from coming forward. And yet again, as, as we saw in the first fight with Tommy Cobb, you know, he's learned, another young prospect here has learned from a very seasoned journeyman. When he comes back to watch the tape, he'll definitely stand in for his going forward. And that's what you want after to, to two fights. I say, you know, we've been a bit critical of Ahmed, but it's only his second fight, as we said, we haven't had a, a, much of an amateur pedigree, so it is difficult. <laughs> round and, and maybe the second round is the one he got it. Carr showed some, some good stuff and, and asked some questions of him. But I mean it's his second pro fight, he'll have things to work on from here and he's been asked a few questions which at your second fight you want to have. It's, it's good to knock everyone out straight away but you don't really learn a lot so you know it'll give the, the team a lot to work about and we don't know he's had a good he's got good support here so he might have been a little bit nervous Ahmed but I would like to see him move a little bit more, box a little bit more because I think that's where his strengths lie. Yeah, well done Sahail Ahmed. I don't think he'll be um, banging Steve Cutswin's door down for rematch with Dan Carr anytime soon, but he can certainly progress from here. <laughs> 